In the southern region of the Great Barrier Reef, coral is turning ghostly white. Well, I think it's devastating. I think what we're looking at here is an advanced bleaching event, and I think a lot of corals are going to die. This footage was shot over the past few weeks, and we show it to one of the world's leading coral experts, Professor Ove Hogulberg. He spent more than a quarter of a century studying bleached coral, and he's still shocked. Well, you can see that. That's incredible. What does that say to you? Well, that's really pushing this community to the limits. Here you're showing a coral that has basically lost most of its zooxanthellae, the little tiny plants, and has gone this brilliant white. How often do you see that? I think it's pretty rare. I mean, you've got to have a lot of heat going in. And it's not only the southern section under stress. The Marine Park Authority last week announced that bleaching is happening in areas across the 2,000 kilometre long reef. Dr Roger Beeden is the authority's chief scientist. It's a mass coral bleaching event, but we won't know how significant it is until that um, plays out, and that's going to play out over probably the next six to eight weeks. Coral bleaching is caused by heat stress. The coral expels the tiny algae providing the colour. These mass bleachings are becoming increasingly common. This is the Great Barrier Reef's fifth such event in just eight years. What that's actually really telling us is that the science has been very clear for some time that the global temperatures are increasing as a result of our changing climate. And the signs globally, over the past year in particular, have been ominous. So what we saw was that the temperature of the oceans uh, increased in, in, in their value at a rate and, a, and an intensity which we have never seen before. The most severe bleaching in Australia occurred in 2016. Aerial surveys showing extensive damage to the northern region. For me personally, it was devastating to look out of the chopper window and see reef after reef destroyed by bleaching. What's happened since then? For those areas that have been affected by uh, coral bleaching, and uh, you can see some recovery in, in places, other places there's no recovery. But you can see that full spectrum of things. The southern parts of the reef had avoided these more severe bleaching events over the past decade. But these images recorded by an independent filmmaker show the extent to which the region's luck has finally run out. To go there and to experience it at that severity and the scale of it was really, really hard. Researcher and climate advocate Yolanda Waters was diving during the filming. I love getting in the water and to not want to get in the water because you don't want to see it is just a really confusing feeling to process. I know that there is the chance that they might recover but having to, to hold tight and cross your fingers that the water might cool down is just not a nice position to be in and I think a lot of people are feeling that anxiety right now. Not only are the branching corals bleaching, which are usually the sensitive ones, but we're also seeing the, the bommies, these really large, long-lived corals also bleaching severely. And these balmy ones have been around for 200 years, so the fact that they're dying under the current conditions should set off the alarm. The effects of bleaching can be reduced by controlling things like pollution and fishing, making reefs like this one more resilient and in Australia, there's been some evidence of success. A 2022 survey showed total coral cover was the highest since records began in the mid 80s. Given enough time and a lack of other pressures, then coral reefs in the Great Barrier Reef are still able to bounce back from these kind of events. But with rising sea temperatures, time may not be on the reef side. What we do know is that if you increase the events that damage corals and you don't give them enough time to recover, you end up losing coral. We've seen bleaching come and go, and what we're seeing here in this 12 to 18 months is that we will see the tipping point exceeded and the, the system crash. Have we reached that tipping point? I think we have, and I know that's 
sort of shocking words, but that's the type of system we're working with at the moment. The Marine Park Authority says it's too early to make that call, but concedes we're in dangerous waters. Right now what we've got is a system that is actually bouncing back from particular events. So I'm um, speculating about exactly how that's going to play out and when. There is no doubt that these events are a clear alarm signal that we all need to be clear about acting on climate change. 